7 NBA stars who played for teams you never knew. Since this offseason has been nothing short of crazy with players moving to teams that we never really thought they'd be playing for like Jimmy Butler to the Timbles, Paul George to the Thunder and Chris Paul to the Rockets, no matter what anyone says, the aim of any player in the NBA is to win an NBA championship and most players obviously with some exceptions play the game to win a championship and the clear example of that was Kevin Durant moving from OKC to Golden State. If it wasn't for a ring that he's dreamt of his entire life, well, then Kevin Durant would probably still be in an Oklahoma City Thunder uniform. And if you want to look at past examples, just look at Gary Payton winning his ring in Miami in 2006. If it wasn't for a ring that he so desperately wanted, he probably would not have played in Miami that season. In saying that, some players just don't want to leave the game that they love, despite their body giving up on them, or the team just not wanting them anymore. And they continue to want to play and another team will give them that chance, especially if they are past NBA stars, not just regular players. So here are seven NBA stars who played for teams you probably never knew. Number seven, Tim Hardaway on the Dallas Mavericks. Tim Hardaway was obviously an amazing point guard in the NBA. He had a clear crossover that could cross everybody in the league. He spent most of his NBA career with the Golden State Warriors and then bounced around after that, after the Warriors had to part ways with him. He actually became unhappy in Golden State because he had a massive feud with teammate Latrell Sprewell and then he was obviously demoted to a bench role, so that was crazy for him. And then in the 2001 NBA Free Agency, after he was dealt to the Heat, which obviously Alonzo Mourning and Tim Hardaway were one of the best punches in the NBA, along with Pat Riley in the East. But then, yeah, like I said, in the 2001 NBA Free Agency, the Heat expressed little interest in bringing Hardaway back for more than the minimum after his frequent injuries over the past couple of years. So then, obviously, the Heat didn't get him back, and Hardaway did find one suitor, and that was only one suitor in the entire NBA the Dallas Mavericks. Eventually, the Heat agreed to send a frustrated Tim Hardaway onto a three-year contract worth about $10 million to the Dallas Mavericks in a sign-and-trade deal. He averaged about 10 points and 4 assists in a team with Steve Nash and Dirk, which is pretty cool, but obviously it didn't turn out too well because it was the end of his career. Number 6, Sean Kemp and the Portland Trailblazers. Now, this one, I guess most of you may know this one, I'm not sure, but I had to add this one to the list because... Seven NBA stars? Well, you gotta add stars in this, and Sean Kemp was definitely a star, as well as a great NBA dunker. I mean, the guy was instrumental leading the Sonics to the 1996 NBA Finals, and he was just a legend in Seattle. I mean, after Seattle, he did go to the Cleveland Cavaliers for a little bit, and he actually had a really good season in Cleveland, but then it just went downhill from there. He actually also played in Portland for two years, and although he wasn't very good, the last years of Kemp's career were riddled with problems, obviously with weight, as well as cocaine and alcohol abuse, which pretty much just ended his career completely. His first season in Portland ended really early when he went into drug rehabilitation, and after two years with the Blazers, Kemp was waived prior to the 2002-03 season. And he actually did play with Pippen and Rasheed Wallace in Portland, which is pretty cool. And had Sean Kemp been able to just turn around from his drug abuse and all that and alcohol abuse, maybe having Rasheed Wallace, Scottie Pippen, even though they were older, it could have been a pretty nice big three. But obviously, like I said, it didn't work out. And it's pretty sad because Kemp was a really good player for 14 years. And then after his 14 years with Seattle, it pretty much went downhill from there. Number 5, Gary Payton to the Boston Celtics. Now, I think this one, some of you may, but a lot of you probably don't know that Gary Payton played for the Boston Celtics. And it's, it's almost odd to think that Gary Payton played in the NBA for 17 years and actually wore five different uniforms because, well, you just only think of him really in Seattle. And for me, Miami, because I'm a Heat fan, I guess some of you may think of him in Miami, but... Pretty much Seattle and Miami, they're the two main teams. But then there's LA, Boston, which is crazy because they're both rivals. And Gary Payton, he, just like Kemp, led the Seattle Supersonics to the 1996 NBA Finals, which they eventually lost to the Chicago Bulls. But obviously, they were really, really good. And he did go to the Finals once again with the Lakers in 2004. But once again, he lost to the Detroit Pistons. Finally, in Miami, alongside Shaquille O'Neal and Dwayne Wade, he was able to win an NBA title. 
And I think a lot of other NBA players should have a look at Gary Payton and what he did with his career. Became one of the greatest NBA point guards of all time, tried to win NBA championships, couldn't do it, and then towards the end of his career, when his career was dying down, then he decided to move teams in order to win championships. I'm looking at you, Kevin Durant. I wish that's how your I wish that's how his career would have turned out. Tried to compete in Oklahoma, couldn't get it done, eventually moves when he's a little bit older to compete for a championship. Obviously, that's not what happened. He joined a 73-win team, but we're not going to talk about that. Let's talk about a story about Gary Payton, because this trade story, it's pretty crazy. Now, while Payton expressed displeasure with a trade, he ultimately did report to the Boston Celtics and began the 2004-05 season on the Celtics as the starting point guard. Then, on February 24th, 2005, Payton was actually traded to the Atlanta Hawks, which is pretty crazy if you ask me. But then the Hawks actually waived Payton immediately following the trade, and he returned a week later to the Boston Celtics as a free agent. Payton then started all 77 games that he played in, averaging 11.3 points per game at 6 assists, as well as the Celtics won the Atlantic Division before losing the first round to the Indiana Pacers. But there you go. That's pretty crazy because the Celtics got Walker and Payton for nothing because they ended up getting Walker from Atlanta and then Payton from free agency, which is absolutely insane, but that's crazy from the Boston Celtics. That is one of the craziest NBA trades I've ever heard of. Number 4, Moses Malone on the San Antonio Spurs. Now obviously Moses is one of the greatest NBA players of all time, one of the best scorers and rebounders of all time, he won 3 MVPs and he won an NBA championship as a member of the 76ers in 1983 with Dr. J. He's one of the greatest offensive rebounders in NBA history but a lot of people forget that he was also a journeyman throughout his career. I mean, obviously his greatest seasons came with the Rockets and the 76ers in the 1970s and into the mid-1980s, but he played with Washington, Atlanta, Milwaukee, and then back to Philly. But then a lot of people don't know he ended his career as a member of the San Antonio Spurs. And while he had one of the greatest NBA careers he was a journeyman that a lot of people don't really know. Now, one of the craziest things that he's actually had in his career, well, he ended his career playing for a Spurs team that during his final game of his career against the Charlotte Hornets, he hit a buzzer-beating three-point shot from the opposing free-throw line, which is 80 feet away from the other ring, which is absolutely crazy. And it was only his eighth three-pointer of his career. But yeah, a lot of people don't know that he played for the San Antonio Spurs. Number 3, Dennis Rodman on the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, Dennis Rodman, obviously we know him as one of the greatest NBA players in NBA history. I mean, defensively, he was a beast. We all know that. And while most people know him as a Detroit Piston or a Chicago Bull, he also went to LA as well as the Spurs and other teams like that and the Dallas Mavericks. But a lot of people don't know that he actually played with Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant. Now, what is crazy though, well, he still averaged 11 rebounds a game when he played in LA, but... Everyone just hated him. All his teammates hated Dennis Rodman in LA, especially Kobe Bryant. Absolutely hated the way Dennis Rodman went about things. All he would do in LA was party. I mean, he did that with Michael Jordan in Chicago, but I guess because it was LA, Los Angeles, Kobe wasn't having any of it. And the Lakers as a whole organization just had enough of Dennis Rodman and his bizarre behavior, waving him only seven weeks after actually signing him. Rodman showed up late for practices and just didn't feel like he was part of the teams. And obviously, his excuse for not being able to train was he couldn't find his socks and shoes. So yeah, you can you can imagine why they uh, waved Dennis Rodman. But Dennis Rodman, one of the craziest players of all time, and it was Shaq who actually wanted him to get you know down there in LA. But Shaq and Rodman as a front court, well, that would have been nasty had Rodman actually been like Chicago Dennis Rodman and Kobe Bryant as well. That's pretty crazy if you ask me. Number two. Dominique Wilkins on the San Antonio Spurs. Now, a lot of people know Dominique, obviously in Atlanta. I mean, the guy was a beast. NBA dunk contest, he won. He also competed and came really close against MJ a couple times. He had one of the greatest individual playoff duels ever with Larry Bird. I mean, the guy was a beast. He was the man in Atlanta. And the Hawks were always competitive when they had Dominique Wilkins. And obviously, he was the reason why. 25 points per game during the decade. His dunks were everywhere all over every highlight reel and obviously Atlanta didn't win I mean they came close and eventually Atlanta did trade him to the Clippers in 1994 but from there he was a 
Bill was pretty much a journeyman from there on. He spent his final seasons in the league playing for the Clippers, the Celtics, the Spurs, and the Magic, before actually leaving the NBA to go play professionally in Italy, and then once after that, he came back to the NBA for the San Antonio Spurs. But what's really crazy about all of this, he returned to the NBA before the 1996-97 season, signing a contract with the San Antonio Spurs, keep in mind, as a free agent to solidify their bench, when then after that, he led the team with an average of 18.2 points per game, 6.5 rebounds, which is absolutely insane for a 37-year-old, if you ask me. That's like some Vince Carter crazy athleticism, but average 18 points and 6.5 rebounds. So, shout out to Dominique Wilkins. I think he always goes a little bit underrated. And number one, Patrick Ewing on the Orlando Magic. Patrick Ewing spent an enormous 17 seasons in the NBA, and 15 of them was with the New York Knicks, one of the greatest New York players of all time, if not the greatest New York player of all time, Patrick Ewing. And while he never won an NBA title with the New York Knicks, everyone in New York loved Patrick Ewing. And obviously after his time with the Knicks, Ewing spent a year with Seattle and then a final year with the Orlando Magic before he eventually retired. Now, let me know if you guys have any other players that you could have put on this list. I know there's heaps more. Carl Malone with the Lakers, Robert Parrish, Hakeem Olajuwon with the you know, Toronto Raptors, just to name a few off the top of my head. But if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe for more videos just like this one. And let me know what videos you guys want to see. And I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks for all your support, and I'll catch you guys in my next one. Subscribe if you enjoyed. I'm out. Peace.